Now that we've learned a little bit more about the mean, it's time to move on to another measure of center, another measure of average, the middle of a data set, which is the median. The median is the second most powerful measure of center that we're going to learn in this course. There are three that we're going to learn all together. So this is the second one. Now the median is the numerical value that separates the lower half and the upper half of the data set. Now, if you're going to do that by hand, you're going to have to arrange your data in ascending order. So let's look at the pet data again for this example, so that'll help clarify what's going on here. So we had three students that had no pets, and then many, many students that had one pet, many, many students that had two pets, and so on. So all in all, we had 32 students total. So that means that the median is the spot where half of the students are below and half of the students are above. So if, if it's uh, 32, 32 divided by 2 is 16. Let me count this out. There we go. These are 16. So there's 16 over here. So let me give them a color of some kind. Um, I don't know. Let me color those cells yellow or something like that. And then... Um, over here, there's 16 numbers over here, and I don't know, I'll color them blue. <laughs> All right, so I have 16 on the low side, 16 on the high side, and the median is the number that is the average uh, between these two. So you take the 2 and the 2 and you add them up and divide by 2, and that's how you would find the median by hand. And the symbol for median is a big capital M. But I'm taking this blue 2 and this yellow 2 and I'm adding them up and I'm dividing by 2. Now, if it had been over here at, say, the 1 and the 2, then I would take 1 plus 2 and divide it by 2 and the median would have been 1.5, for example. Or over here, 2 and 3, added those two up, that would have been 2.5. But for this data set, the, uh, the median ended up being halfway between 2 and 2 because that's how that particular classroom worked. Okay, so that's how to find the median by hand, but of course we don't want to have to find this by hand all the time, and we can use our calculator to find it. So I've got the calculator pulled up, stat, edit was where the data set was, so I moved to stat, moved to calculate, moved to number one, one variable stats just like before, and you can see there was the mean that we came up with before, which was x bar, 2.3125. And then you see that little arrow there, that means that there's more stuff down below. So if you press the down arrow, you'll get to see it. And there's the median, which is 2, which is exactly what we found when we did it by hand. So you could also find it with your calculator. Honestly, I expect you to find it with your calculator almost every single time. All right, so now let's think about how our data set would be affected if we did something rather drastic. A new student walks into our classroom and they own a petting zoo with 127 pets. This is actually from a real life example I had. Um, we had a student, it's, it's a long story, but basically for a science class they had to uh, create a tarantula farm and so they had 127 tarantulas, <laughs> which was rather astonishing. So. Um, this, this actually happened with uh, a couple students in particular. All right, so what would happen? So we're going to add a student over here, insert column to the right, and they're going to be at 127. Oh, hold on, let me fix that. All right, so now looking at it, in the one above, the median was the halfway spot between 2 and 2, right? So we took these two, there were 16 below, 16 above, and then we averaged out the two orange ones, and that, sure enough, that's what we got. But in the new one, whoop, hold on. When we add in the 127 over here on the far right, what that's going to do is it's going to move the median from where it was, which was the average of these two, right, the second and the third two, and make it just this two right here in the middle. It kind of moves a half space over. So the median is actually still 2. It just nudges its way along the, the row of numbers. So instead of, oops, instead of being between the second and the third 2, taking the average of the second and the third 2, it actually just becomes the third 2. If you put another number in at the far right, say like another student has uh, 240 tarantulas, then it actually becomes the average of the third 2 and the fourth 2. And it just kind of moves a half step along the data set. So the median is actually still 2, but the mean 
is no longer 2.3125 like it was before. Now let's prove that. So if I bring up the calculator and I go to stat and I go to edit. Now I know I want to add a number in at the very bottom, so let me teach you a little trick. If you press up, it, it highlights the whole list, and then you press up again, it'll take you to the bottom value of that list. So I can type in 127, enter right here. Then I go to stat, and I go to calculate, and I go to one variable stat, move down to calculate and press enter, and you can see the mean. The mean has become 6.0909. Whereas the median, in case you don't believe my argument for by hand, the calculator shows it right there. It's still 2. That's astonishing. That should be astonishing to you. There's something really interesting going on, mathematically speaking. Um, quite profound, in fact. And that is that when we put in a very high value, or honestly it happens if you have a very low value, but that was not possible with this data set um, because this was ratio data, so there were no negatives possible. But if you have a very high value or very low value, called an extreme value, which is called an outlier, that's going to have a very great effect on the mean, but not the median. The median is resistant to that outlier. That's what we say. right? The median resists the pull of that outlier. The outlier being um, the green, or the 127 there and I highlighted it in green so you could see. So that 127 is an outlier. It's way far away from the rest of the data set. It's, a, it's called an extreme value. It's huge, hugely different than the rest of the data set. And you can have them on the high side or the low side again, but this one was a high one. And it had this huge effect on the mean, but didn't really affect the median at all. The median stayed the same. Now, will it always stay the same? Not necessarily, so let me just make a little note. The median may move, like say from 1.5 to 2, or from 2 to 2.5, or something small like that. Um, it just depends on the data set. This particular data set, it didn't really move at all because it went from, the, again, the average of those two orange ones to just this single orange value of 2. So it didn't really have a big effect on it. Now that's the definition of resistancy. A resistant data or a resistant statistic, and there are going to be several of them, but the median's probably the most important for our course, which is the median resists extreme values. When you get really weird numbers in their data set, the median doesn't get pulled around the way the mean does. So that means that when you have a data set that has an extreme value, which is the better measure of center? Which is the one that would be a better representation of the class? Well, when there's no extreme value, the mean and the median, eh, they're both pretty good. You know, mean's probably a little bit better. But when there's an extreme value, like the 127, then the median is way better because the median resists that pull of the extreme value, unlike the mean, which gets yanked around. So, for example, in our data set, most students were close to two pets. Right? Almost nobody had pets of six. Actually, nobody did. Um, but there were a couple students that were up that high at the five, eight, and nine level. But six is a tremendously unuseful value for examining that data set because there were so few students that high. That did not measure center at all for us. There, I thought I'd add that in. It resists the extreme value of 127. which leads to the important point number two. So important number, point number one is that the mean is extremely sensitive to extreme values. So if you have outliers, the mean is going to get pulled all this way and that based on the outliers, but the median resists that pull. And that means that the median, sorry about the dogs barking, one second. There, when the data set are skewed, the median is the preferred measure of central tendency over the arithmetic mean, precisely because the median is resistant to those extreme values. And this idea leads us to a very, very important table, one I would highly recommend you put onto your note sheet for your first exams, which is how can you tell whether your data set is skewed, right, has a weird shape, or symmetric, What's a good way to determine that? And if it is skewed, what's the better measure of center? So if it's skewed left, that means you have extreme values on the low side. You have a tail kind of going off to the left to the low side. 
the way that's going to show up in your statistics is that your mean will be significantly less than your median. I'm not talking like a little tiny bit less. I'm talking about, you know, significantly less. And that's a judgment call you have to make. When that happens, your better measure of center is the median because the median isn't getting pulled towards that tail, but the mean is. The mean is the dashed line. The median is the dotted line. The dotted line is a better measure of center than the dashed one. Um, that's also going to mean a better measure of spread, which is called the IQR, which we will learn about in section 3.4. Don't worry about it right this second. I just wanted this table to be complete so you could copy it down for your notes for your exam. Now let's skip over the middle and let's go to the high side. If it's skewed right, that means there's a big tail over here on the right. That means there are outliers or extreme values on the right. So for example, this is a picture perhaps of our tarantula data, our pet data. And there's one person way over here on the right who has a tarantula farm of 127 tarantulas. So that's skewed right. And we could see it because the mean was significantly greater than the median, for example. The mean was 6.091, whereas the median was only 2. All right, so if that happens, if the mean is significantly greater than the median, it'll be skewed right, or vice versa. If it's skewed right, then the mean is significantly greater than the median. And again, the better measure of center is the median because the median resists that skewing, as does the IQR when you learn about that, which is in section 3.4, called the interquartile range is what it's called. Now, what if they're symmetric? Well, if it's, the data set is symmetric, then the mean and the median are pretty similar to each other, as our data set was originally when we um, did not have the 127, but it wasn't perfect. We still had somebody at 8 and 9, which is why the mean was a little bit higher for us here. The mean was 2.3125, and the median was only 2. So it's a touch skewed right, but it wasn't too bad. So that's kind of a judgment call. You know, is it symmetric or not? You might want to graph it to make sure. Hold on, let me scroll through this. So there we have it. So if the mean and the median are similar-ish, and how similar is similar enough that you can call it? Well, it's a judgment call. Often you use graphs to kind of back yourself up, dot plots or histograms or whatever. All right, so if it's symmetric, then the mean and the median are close to each other. The mean would be the better measure of center. And of course, it's either X bar or it's mu, depending on what kind of data set you're talking about. If you're talking about a population, you use the Greek letter mu. If it's a sample, you use X bar. So you use whichever one's appropriate for your data set. So the mean and the median are basically at the same spot, in which case then the standard deviation is going to be the matter measure of spread. We'll learn about standard deviation in section 3.2. But again, I just wanted this table to be nice and complete so that you could use it for the sake of your exam note sheets.